Because there's no right or wrong answer. We can pair something like the happy positive love right. with all this depressing stuff about the fleeting nature of the world yeah. and put it there in a small package that's kind of hard to unpack. So good. And it's like a different way of writing. Right? A different way of writing. Is it more easier, challenging, different? Like what's, like how would you deal with this versus a novel written in prose? I mean, this is challenging considering like the way he, the way he writes, like his, his word structure and the words he uses. And trying to and trying to depict what he's saying, like this one was kind of easy because I know he was talking about talking about the fall, but when we were talking about the other poems. It was like, what is he saying? Like when we have to okay. the poem on Friday. So the metaphors and the imagery and the syntax yeah. can be challenging and make it a more rewarding or challenging experience. Right, but I like the okay. first time. Okay, good. Okay, now let's hear let's hear an anti. Mm. Yeah. You know how so many people say like what you do in high school really doesn't have like much to do with what you do in the future when you grow up or when you get a job or whatever. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is not necessary to read. There's a whole bunch of other poems that people write. We don't have to read this type. I guess like people, you know, praise him too highly. People, anybody can write a poem. I don't see why it's so important to read his poems. And the, on top of that, the fact that it's hard to understand. Okay. Um, so for you, you feel the flip, the, on the flip side about the hard to understand. You find that kind of to use a hard to understand word, maybe obfuscating, which is a way of saying confusing. So I am here saying that he likes getting into that challenge maybe makes him a little more interested. Mm -hmm. But you're saying there are a million poems. Why are we going to pick these really old ones that are sort of challenging and may not seem as applicable? Mm -hmm. When we unpack them, does it seem like the love, the world, whatever that he's talking about has connections to our world today? Yeah, but... If they were just not so hard to understand. Okay, but it's buried under, you have to dig yeah. really hard to get to that. Okay. Do you think, now do you think the average person during Shakespeare's time would have had an easier time with this poem? Or just as hard? Probably. Probably an easier time because of the language. Okay. Another thoughts? Also no? No. I don't see the purpose in learning Shakespeare. Because, like Jessica said, we're not in this time no more, so we should write it the way we are. So, Okay, so the, an issue more with the form or the structure of the syntax again yeah. versus the themes that he's talking about. Yeah. Like sort of why we have to read this outdated language with this structure. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, more thoughts, more thoughts, Pro? Anybody that we haven't covered movement? Yeah. It's like it's rewarding if you find your understanding. Ah, okay, so some reward from going through the struggle of finally getting it. Okay. Um, how do we feel, let's just go, let's zoom out, oh, you got more? Yeah, I got a reason why I think we do study it. Okay. Because like, when we, when we talk about anything that's like great, we always study like who first started it. And I'm not saying he, he first started it for like English people, you know? Mm -hmm. so I, I think that's the reason why we always study it. Ah, okay, because he's sort of a hallmark, or ooh, to use a, to use a vocab word, a landmark okay. right, example right. of a sonnet writer. What about poet, how many people here just, you're going to have to decide what like or don't like me. How many people here like poetry? Just in general. How many people would say they don't like poetry? And a couple, a couple abstentions. Okay. Uh, for those of us who don't like it, why don't we like it? Just say it. Just, just, yeah. You don't like reading? Wow. Yikes. <laughs> Did you hear that, right? <laughs> um, yeah. Don't like to be able to have to think extra hard to be able to get like a simple idea. Have to, like we have to read four lines to get like one simple idea out of the sonnet. Now that's intriguing to me because I I'm kind of with you there because part of the reason isn't part of the reason we're in an English class is we're taught to be able to use the words to say the thoughts that we have to express the thoughts that we have so that other people can understand them. And then we have people who become poets who seem to spend a lot of their time taking things that are easy to understand and making them into a puzzle. Yes, making them more complicated. So I'm kind of with that. There's sort of this weird game going on. Um, and it can be frustrating, especially when you're in a classroom setting and you're told that you have to sort of try and take something concrete from these poems, right? You're responsible for getting them. And you can't just enjoy them in your personal way. Who here likes poetry just on their own, outside of the school context? Yeah. Um, I like poetry, I write poetry, I have a whole book of poetry, and it's just some way I can let my emotions down. Um, ah, like so you like to use poetry, so then maybe that helps fuel your appreciation for other people. So for you it has a personal resonance, like you use, you write poetry as 
part of your personal development, where we are, your self-expression. Um, did you read poetry before you wrote it, or always kind of hand in hand? I did. I've written poetry before I read some. Okay. So this is like. Uh, the first poem, well, the first known poem I've ever read was in middle school. But I started writing poetry when I was in the first grade. Okay, wow. So you were doing it on your own, and now you use other people's poems to help inform you or see what you might like to do? No, so I free write, but I've never written a, in like the sonnet structure. Okay, so, so the structure is something new. I'm thinking about it, um, I haven't done it yet. Okay, okay. Yeah. I like poetry in the music sense, like rap. Ah, okay. It gives you something to relate to. Okay. Like, um, like Drake. Say more about that. It gives you something to relate to. All right. Who? Drake. All right. A good example is uh, Drake. <laughs> when he be rapping, I be thinking like, this is exactly how I'm feeling. And then he'll write a song of what to do about it. Mm. How to think about it. like. Like, like, it give you an explanation on why things go a certain way, like why people do certain things. So he starts, he's writing a song, and in his writing of that song, or rapping about the song, uh, rap, the lyrics, he works through a thought process that addresses an issue or an emotion you had, and you can see that working through of his problem right. and adapt that. Right. Yes, okay, I, I, like, I like hearing that. I think that, we find that in all art. Not just isolated to poetry, but you read a good novel. Maybe there's a character and then you're like, wow, that character reminds me of me. He or she has similar issues. Well, how did he or she deal with these issues? How did it work out? Okay? So that's part of the beauty of art is that we find a mirror for ourselves and hopefully we can see some of us reflected and then try and reflect some of what we see. So I like that you can find that. I will now, in these last couple minutes, make sort of a small statement for why I think that Shakespeare is important. I just think he's really, really good. Okay? I'm someone who thinks of myself okay, as a pretty darn good writer. Okay? I don't, you know, you guys haven't really seen much of my writing. I write prose and poetry and all that. You've seen a couple of little quick things on the board. Okay? But for someone who thinks of themselves as a writer, if you look at Shakespeare and you realize all the things he's doing in his plays especially, but also in these sonnets, man, he's good. Okay? And it's sort of like if you're going to be a baseball player, you got to watch what Joe DiMaggio did, okay? Or you've got to watch, you've got to know a little bit about Ty Cobb. You know, if you're going to be a quarterback, you probably need to study everyone from, you know, Johnny Unitas, okay, to Fran Tarkington, to Joe Montana, to Diamond McNabb, okay? All the way through history, you've got to hit these touch points because these are people that work in your craft. So if you're interested at all in writing, Shakespeare is just someone who is really good. Now we can argue about whether or not we like what he did. Okay, I can appreciate that Mozart is an amazing classical composer, but I don't really love what he's doing. It doesn't really match up with me the way that other composers, like say Bach does. Okay, you really connect with Drake. Some of your classmates may not get what Drake's doing or it might not connect with them. But I would say, aesthetically, okay, Drake is a good rapper. Whether or not I like him or not, I can appreciate his success and his skill. And that's the same way I feel about Shakespeare. Now, should we be studying, do we need to be studying sonnets once, twice, three times in middle school or high school? No. Maybe, maybe not. Okay? There may be more important things that we can look at other than poetry. And I say important, like more viable things, things that might help you more do the writing that you want to do. But for someone or some people who are interested in poetry, sonnets are something that you need to see. Good right? afternoon. Because man. this, this is a marvelous Monday afternoon. What's the word? What's the word? As far as the craft goes, these are very, very well done. Okay? So that's sort of why we need to do it. Alright, you can cut that now.